In our first story, the defense minister is assuring the family of the late Major Maxwell Mahama that it will stop at nothing in securing justice for the family. A year ago, the late soldier was lynched at Denchobwase by residents of the town on suspicion. He was an armed robber. Speaking at the sword cutting ceremony for the construction of a monument in honor of the fallen soldier, Dominic Nitewo, the Minister of Defense said, though the wheels of justice is grinding slowly, the, war, the law will ultimately get the perpetrators punished. Nancy M. Fajradosi was at the event in our reports. Earlier on Tuesday, there was a memorial service at the St. Catherine Catholic Church at Bema Camp, where prayers were said for the soul of the departed soldier. Major Mama was somebody who was so affable that if I see him somewhere, I'll say, why didn't you use your pistol on those whatever? But he was somebody who would give his life instead of taking somebody's life. He was, well, I think I've said enough. May his soul rest in peace. Then family and friends gathered at the military cemetery to lay roots in remembrance of the fallen soldier. This brought back pain and tears. <laughs> Even the father of the lynched soldier could not hold back his tears as he broke down midway in an interview with journalists. Today marks the one day, one year. But, uh, since 20, uh, 29th May 2017, when he died, it has always been, the pain has always been the same. And today, it's as if it happened even today. We are still in pain. And we pray that justice should take its course until all the mob, all, all, all the mob is yeah, there. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> then a sword cutting for the construction of a monument in honor of the late Major Maxwell Mahama to crown activities. This is what the monument to be constructed at the airport hills will look like when completed. The monument is to serve as a symbol to end mob justice. Addressing the gathering, Defense Minister Dominic Nitewo pleaded with the family to exercise patience and let justice take its course. I would also urge you and the general public to continue to exercise restraint and patience while the judicial process is ongoing. Remember that the wheels of justice grind slowly, but it will catch up with the evil doers. But father of the slain soldier, Captain Retired Dennis Adam Mahama says, though he agrees with the defense minister, the suspect standing trial is not the true reflection of what happened on the fateful day. We have no option than to actually go by what he's saying. He's right. We just have to be patient. But we can all say that we are happy with the delay, and especially when the number is just 14 people standing trial out of the mob that was described to us, which numbers over a hundred people. The whole village virtually came out. So if some were throwing stones, some even prevented him from escaping. Uh, we, we think that they are all accomplices. An accomplice to a crime is equally guilty. So we expect that all of them we should have gotten a number before trial more than this. Nancy MFA Jadosi. President Ekufado has called for cordiality between the special prosecutor and his deputy in dealing with cases of corruption that come before them. Cynthia Lamte, who was sworn in on Tuesday to officially start work, is expected to partner her boss, Martin Amidu, to prosecute corrupt cases in the public space and politically expose private individuals. Presented the instrument of authority, the president called on her to dispense her duties without fear or favor, adding, government will play its part to ensure the office of the special prosecutor lives up to the expectation. I will do my work diligently without fear or favor to make sure 
that the tag that has been given to me is well done. I also pray and ask God's, for God's wisdom and mercy that he will give me the strength and wisdom so that I'll be able to go through challenges that might come as a result of my work. And I know the good Lord will do that for us. And then the two of us will sing your popular song. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I thank you very much because it's an honor tax for me. I feel elated that out of all the people in Ghana, I should be chosen to do this sort of work. Once again, I thank you and the people of Ghana. The uh, awareness of the task that the, this appointment has called you to perform. It's a very difficult task. It's unprecedented in our, in our history. Both of you are the pioneers in this work. But your vetting showed clearly that you have a very good understanding of what you're being called upon to do. The issues are known to our country to the entire Ghanaian polity, the damage that corruption has done to our nation, and that therefore there is the need for us, within the parameters of the rule of law, to find effective instruments for dealing with it. And this is the solution that this government and the people of Ghana have devised to create this independent, non-partisan office that without ill will or favor, fear or fear, will go ahead and examine, investigate, and if necessary, prosecute public office holders, politically exposed persons, for acts of corruption in our country. It's, a, it's a, an onerous task, but your history, your background, your own personality, tells all of us who have brought you to this point that you should be more than capable of filling, fulfilling the requirements of this office. In other news, the board chairman of the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority, Peter McMenu, has denied allegations of corruption leveled against him by some workers of the authority. The workers had, among others, alleged that Specialty, a uh, travel and tour agency owned by his wife, had been given a contract to undertake travel arrangements for the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. At a news conference, Mr. Peter McMain, who tendered in document that showed the company in question had a relationship with the authority predating his chairmanship. He said the allegation that his awarded contract to his children were just attempts by the workers def to defame him. If what Evans Chinry has more in this report. McMenor during a heated press briefing outlined all the allegations leveled against him and says it is painful that such issues had to come up when he's doing his best to help the company and the country. Issues such as his wife taking over ticketing of staff travels and his children getting contracts from the company were all denied by the board chair. I know that one of them comes to Gapua for business, for his company, the bank, to come to uh, uh, Gapua to, as it were, put their money in the bank. That's all I know about it. I don't think they have come for any contract. That they are the biggest supplier. Hey! <laughs> I have five children. Three work at the bank. One is a student. I mean, the youngest one. As a baby lass, <laughs> and one owns a borehole drilling company. He's in borehole water well drilling company, Western Waterworks. Maybe if uh, GPHA is drilling boreholes, then we could come and bid. <laughs> so I challenge the union to name any company that deals or has contracts with GPHA that belongs to any of my children, and I challenge them on this. Ladies and gentlemen, I have started here. All what I've stated here is the truth and verifiable truth. I'm providing you with the documents to verify. As to why some workers of GPHA will set out to tell those lies about me, it's a matter I do not know. 
I have consulted my lawyers anyway, and I reserve the right to pursue legal action against those who have made it very defamatory comments against my personality. Where did the union get its figure that Mark Menu is directing them, GPHA, to pay $200,000, <coughs> which they spewed out in Takrani? Where did they get that? For me, all these things I'm saying, I'm going to give you the documentary evidence. The, the concession between which GPHA has signed with the Tema LNG Consortium, I'll provide you the document for you to know the details, whether indeed it is true that GPHA is only taking 200,000 on my orders, as they said in their press statement in Takrade. They also allege that I'm using my position to circumvent procurement process in order to acquire for myself a tag boat, Tema Mahian. Spare parts have been procured to refurbish this tag boat recently. Now, let me set the record straight on this too. According to a response to a memo by the procurement manager, no spare parts have been procured to refurbish this tag boat. Indeed, refurbishment of the tag boat was not budgeted for in 2018 budget. Kumi's Ghana Limited is the local agent for Kumi's engine, so they can find out from them. GPHA has not added anything from Kumi's Ghana Limited. The engine on the craft had a technical problem. Kumi's Ghana Limited was invited to inspect and submit proposals, which they have not done as I speak. Multinational mining firm Asanko Gold has agreed to resettle residents of Konnase displaced by its operations in the Amansia West District of the Ashanti region. Some 51 households had their structures destroyed by floods caused by blockades at the company's disposal sites. Prince Apia has more in the next report. Last year, property worth huge sums of money was washed away as water covered many houses at Konnase. Community leaders and a district assembly petitioned Asanko Mine on the development. After several meetings and negotiations, one of which was held on Monday at Manson Quanta, stakeholders reached an agreement. It followed completion of investigations and assessment by the Architectural and Engineering Services Limited of extent and cost of damage. Among recommendations, Asanko will construct new houses and renovate damaged buildings as well as provide proper drainage systems in the community. Uh, it's a five point. We say that the DC and the traditional council and the assemblyman should put a monitorium on the, like where the structures are as of the time of investigation. Nobody should continue with it. Then we also recommend that some of the building should be relocated. Some to depending on the individual. If he wants his money, he has to be paid to go and get another land somewhere. To move forward, we need a properly stone design stone green there to take it because the, the, the issue is that even if some of the buildings that we re are recommending are to be repaired uh, and the flood situation is not solved, it means that when the flood comes again, those buildings, even though they will not be seriously affected, will still be affected by, by, the, by the rain. So we are thinking, well, we are recommending that even if those buildings, we agree that those buildings are to be repaired, then we, we strongly recommend that a storm drain should be, should be done over there. District Chief Executive of Amansia West, William Sasanti Bediakon says the truce eases tension between residents and a mining firm. But there's a committee that has been put in place today. The nine-member committee is going to make sure that we get to the latter of all the uh, recommendations of AESA. About 31 houses that were affected. It's been recommended that the company will bore the, the cost of relocating the people. They're going to build new houses for them. And then those who were building at lentil or foundation level, um, there's going to be some evaluation of the structures and then the uh, amount involved paid to the affected people. Some victims whose houses are earmarked for renovation are dissatisfied at the arrangement. They want all houses reconstructed.
They said they will reconstruct for my neighbors, but mine will be renovated. That I won't agree. We are happy with the agreement, but the stones they are dumping here is affecting our health. We have agreed with them, but if they don't heed to their promises, we will come at them. Prince Apia, reporting. According to the United Nations Children's Fund survey, 42% of healthcare facilities in sub-Saharan Africa do not have running water. This has resulted in many babies born at such facilities contracting infections, sometimes leading to their death. And to help curb this phenomenon, the Rural Initiatives for Self-Empowerment, Rice Ghana, has provided a water facility for the Chuchalega Health Center in Bolsa North District of the Upper East Region. And it's where correspondent Albert Sori is reporting from. Access to water at the Chichuluga Healthcare Center in the Bursa North District was a serious problem in the past, and this often affected healthcare delivery there. According to the District Director of Health Services, health workers and relatives of patients brought here often had to struggle to bring water from long distances for use at this healthcare center. However, a water and sanitation facility has now been provided by the Rural Initiatives for Self-Empowerment, RISE Ghana, with funding from the Australian High Commission in Ghana. The facility is meant to help provide better maternal and child health in the Busa North District. Awal Ahmed is Executive Director of RISE Ghana. This project is providing water facilities that is piped throughout the facility so that people who come can assess these services. We want to see that fewer babies die. Ghana as a country has a policy to reduce the number of births from 32,000 per 1,000 births to 21 per 1,000 births. This cannot happen if our health facilities do not have water. The provision of the water and sanitation facility is under a one-year project called the Direct Aid Program. Under the project, one other healthcare center at Kaljisa, also in the Bursa North District, has been provided a similar facility. Bursa North District Director of Health Services, Samuel Anyogdem, said the water facility has brought a big relief to health staff and patients at the Chichulga Healthcare Center. The Chichulga has battled with uh, uh, water for quite a long time now. And uh, you see them with yellow gallons going around the communities looking for water. And uh, more so is that uh, when you go, because those water boreholes have to be maintained. And so they request for money. If you want to fetch water with your gallon, you have to pay one CD or 50 pesos for the container, depending on the size of the container you sent there. And for that matter, it was really, really a big issue, a big problem. So a woman will come to a facility uh, to cater for a pregnant woman, and then you are asked to go and bring water. And so it was really a big problem. And so today, we are really, really happy that uh, we've been able to solve this problem of water for Chichilga Health Center. Two facilities in the Kasna Nankana West District will also be provided with water and sanitation facilities under the direct aid program. Speaking on behalf of the Australian government, third secretary at the Australian High Commission in Ghana, Claire Mozonier, said the Australian government was proud to be supporting Ghana in the area of maternal and child health. According to a 2014 World Bank study, the lifetime risk of maternal mortality is one in 38 in sub-Saharan Africa. The fact is, almost all maternal deaths take place in low-income settings, and these could be prevented. So to have a WASH facility here, supported by the Australian government, makes us extremely proud, uh, as improvements in water and sanitation are one way through which the health of mothers and babies could be improved and their lives saved. Reporting for Joy News, Albert Sorry, Chichuliga, Upper East Region. Well, so good way to help many communities 
live better livelihood. But that's it for the latest news headlines. We have more news. We'll be reviewing the newspapers. My, myself, Mama Vio Swabwajo, we'll also be looking at uh, myjohnline.com and the various online portals. But please uh, keep giving us more of your messages on regularly. Uh, Facebook, join us on TV and also our Twitter handle. We're taking a break. We'll be right back. Thank you.